names one person. Mm -hmm. uh, all our common names, they're universals. Uh, our concepts are all universal in character. Now, the, the point about the universal is it cannot be in matter. What makes, what, let me take for a moment two almost, almost perfectly identical uh, ball bearings, indistinguishable. Mm -hmm. Why do you say they're two? Because one occupies this space, one occupies that. If they occupy the same space, there'd be one, wouldn't they? Because mm -hmm. every respect identical. What makes them two is that other is, is matter. Matter can't, two, two, two units of matter can't be in the same place. So matter, the Middle Ages were very, were very smart when they said matter is the principle of individuation. Now, if we thought with our brains, we could only do this as we see, we see with our eyes, we imagine with our, you can't, for example, you and I can't imagine a triangle. You can imagine a scalene triangle, an equilateral triangle, a right triangle, a large triangle, a small triangle, a blue triangle, a green triangle. Everything you imagine is particularized. It's shaped, yeah. If you, if you try to imagine triangle itself, you can't do it. Why can't you do it? Because to think triangle, you, you, you don't have to use your brain. If you use your brain to think, like imagine, use your brain to imagine, you use your brain, and, uh, your eyes and your brain, your, your ears and your brain to, to see, everything you see, imagine, remember in a sensitive fashion is always particular. But this is only when you're dealing with universals, right? No, no, no. What about, what about, say, God? Is he universal? Definitely so. Well, uh, what, what about uh, when you think God? Well, that's a, see, God is not a concept in the ordinary sense. God is an extraordinary intellectual construct. Mm -hmm. That's a very hard term. In fact, God is not a universal. God is a proper name in a sense. Uh, if, if, if I would substitute a phrase for God, I would say the, the supreme being who created the cosmos. Mm -hmm. That refers to one supreme being. So that is like a proper name, like the president of the United States in 1990. So God is not it's so, a very special concept. So, so you, you're, you're taxonomizing him uniquely. That's right. Yeah. So uh, in, in that sense, you can't think God in a multiplicity. No. Yeah. But, well, but the whole idea of monotheism. No, we, we talk about divinities. Yes. Oh, that's it, yeah. it's, 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 divinity is a universal term. Yeah. But now, when you say that, uh, when you say, that having established that uh, intellect is the mind uh, over matter, you, you, uh, you prescind it from the brain. Yes and assign to it, therefore, what function that would be considered uncommon by a naturalist or a philosophical materialist? Well, I would say that human thinking, the kind of thinking that computers can't do, and the, my, my strongest argument is against the notion of reducing the brain, the human thinking to a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you know, the, the um, AI, the artificial intelligence boys think they're going to produce, Think that they still haven't done it, but they think the future holds the promise of a machine that will be indistinguishable in performance from a human being. Yeah, electronic thought. That's right. Yeah. I, I think that's impossible because, the, see, if the brain were the organ of thought, they could do it. Because I think they can replicate the brain in, a, in another material organ. Mm -hmm. But if the intellect and not the brain is the organ of thought, they will not be able to produce a machine that can do specifically human thinking. And I make a point about that. Um, all logical thought is mechanical. Mm -hmm. They can produce machines that would be logical. But the wonderful thing about human thought is it's not logical. We, we can be logical, but all of our great leaps of... of, of, of our acts of transcendence. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, you're not telling me, are you, because I read a little bit of this stuff, uh, that there are people around who are saying that they can develop a computer that will give you a response which you hadn't prefetted, are they? No. They... they, 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 they they talk about the computer having uh, uh, access to randomness. but uh, uh, Like the monkeys who type out Hamlet. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. But the uh, way you can imagine this is, suppose you took an ocean voyage that lasted, let's say, two months. And you had a deck chair. Uh, and someone else was sitting next to you. And you, had, you, you met every morning for morning bouillon on, on the deck. And you talked to this fellow next to you every day for two hours. Could you predict on any day what the turn of the conversation would be the next day? You couldn't. It, 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 a long... Well, you, you couldn't with certitude. No. But you could with a high probability. 
But uh, you, you Hi, would, Joe. Nevertheless, yeah. nevertheless, there'd be all kinds of surprises, wouldn't there? Yeah. He, he or you would say something that you hadn't thought of before. Uh, in other words, a, lo a long human conversation is unprogrammable. You couldn't program it. It's unpredictable. Uh, uh, you mean you couldn't program it in terms of logical succession, or you couldn't program it anyway? You couldn't, couldn't program a computer to do it, for example. Mm. In other words... I if, can think of a lot of Democrats I could program. Yeah, I'm sure you could. <laughs> <laughs> but then I... <laughs> but uh, if there were a screen between you and the, the fellow next to, next to you on the deck chair, yeah. and the question is, could you tell whether you were having this conversation with a machine or a human being? Yeah. I, I think you always could. I think you always could tell whether the conversation was between you... By the way, suppose there were no voices involved. Everything was transmitted by printout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you could ask any question you wanted. Keep on asking them, course of two months. I think you'd soon, uh, the, if it ever happened, that you could say, I don't know, I, I, I really don't, 50 50, I can't tell whether it's a machine I'm talking to or a human being, I, I'd be wrong. Mm -hmm. I'd tear it all up. Right. But if, I think that will never happen. In other words, I think the indiscernibility of a machine from a human being is never going to happen. That machines will never function so that yeah. mm -hmm. they will be indiscernible for human beings. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, that that's the importance of this thing, is the immaterial of the intellect. If the brain did the job, I'd be wrong. Uh, okay, let me, let, let, me, let me just close down on yeah. this. Suppose uh, I were here, the naturalist, and I were to say to you, the, uh, the brain is, respons is, is um, competent to make uh, responses so copious that it is inconceivable that we could ever program it to reply to every contingent question you might ask it under the circumstances. Won't it always surprise you, even if it were simply the brain itself rather than mm -hmm. uh, the intellect? But if it were the brain itself, you know, that's the other side of the argument. In terms of what matter, what matter does, if it's the brain, you would have no universal concepts whatsoever. I'm saying the brain cannot be an organ which operates with universals because matter, I repeat now about the triangle. Why is it you can't imagine triangle as such? Why do any, any yeah. picture, any picture yeah. you call before your mind a triangle will be of some shape, size, and color? You know, there's a wonderful exchange in Huckleberry Finn between the uh, the old uh, uh, darky, the old Negro, Jim, who's illiterate. And um, either Huck or Tom Sawyer says to him, you know, in, in France, the word for cow is vache. <laughs> and he says, well, how can that be? A cow is a cow. How can it be uh, other things? A and uh, this was really an instruction in universals mm -hmm. to an illiterate, wasn't it? That's right. Uh, now, are you saying that... Um, uh, this would be an indication of the working of the intellect because he could, Im he could Im imagine... No. It is the fact that if you, if you could not rise above your imagination, yeah. above, you could not think triangle. Mm -hmm. You could imagine triangle to the end of time. It would always be of some shape, size, and color. But oh, just, just think of... Uh, well, let, 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 let think of God for a moment. You can't imagine. Is that God. constitutional? It's quite constitutional. And you can't. You, the, the re reason my most people have trouble with God and have. Da, 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 I had great difficulty with, with in, in church with people who think, think that heaven is a place, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, if God is, God is a purely spiritual being, God does not exist in any physical place whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's a state of being, which is the divine, but not a place. Um, and when you, you, you can only think, one of the reasons why the great Jewish theologian, Maimonides, and St. Thomas following the rabbi, uh, insisted upon negative theology is because you cannot positively think of God. You, 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 people who imagine God, even imagine God, anthropomorphize God, mm -hmm. as, as the artists do, of course. You have to think of God negatively incorruptible, non-temporal, immaterial, immutable, you know, all, those, all those negative words. 
And when you think of God positive, there are three positive things you can say about God. God lives, God knows, and God wills. God lives or God exists? Live, well, God exists. Is, mm -hmm. Whenever you say God exists, lives, wills, and knows, mm -hmm. you have to immediately add, but not as you and I li exist, not as you and I live, not as you and I know, not as you and I will. That not comes in there, because if you don't do that, you're, you're saying that the word live is applied univocally, in the same sense to God and you.